it's always been interesting to see that strangers never quite believe that I'm a physicist or that I'm a particle physicist. And you know, the startled looks are great because it's just not, it's not what people are expecting. I was always really interested in science and math Math in particular, but I didn't want to do pure mathematics. I wanted to do something that applied to the real world. When I was a high schooler, two things happened. One is that when I was um, a junior going into senior year, I got to attend the summer science program, which still exists, by the way. Um, it's a program in astronomy where you learn advanced calculus, spherical trigonometry, um, advanced Newtonian dynamics, um, nowadays some computer programming, and you learn how to operate a telescope. And you take photograph, um, three photographs, about five, five nights spacing between them, of an asteroid, and by measuring where exactly the asteroid is in the sky against the background of the stars, you can use all the math that you've learned to calculate the orbit of the asteroid, and then that information is sent to a national database where observations are compiled so that we have the best possible knowledge of the asteroids. And so that was just incredible for me because I was learning at speed. I had all these great peers to work with. It was a hard but manageable problem. Um, that was really inspiring. And then in my senior year of high school, we had a um, you could spend the last quarter of the year, or trimester as we called it, doing some kind of a senior project. And I got to do one at the AT&T AT Bell Labs, which um, was, that was back before the Bell system broke up. It was really near my parents' house, and I got to become an experimental physicist. They treated me as a member of the collaboration. After I learned how to work on other people's experiments, they let me use the 4-MeV Van de Graaff accelerator that accelerated helium ions and would um, bounce them off of targets and then you'd measure what, what was happening in the scattering. They let me design my own experiments and run them. I could run the machine myself. This was incredible. I was 17 years old and I'm getting to work with this particle accelerator. Um, so I was hooked and I was going into physics. You know, there's, there's a yearning among people to understand the origins of the universe. Where did we come from? Why are we here? And particle physics deals with the earliest moments of the universe. What existed right after the Big Bang? And how did we get from there to now? It all has to do with what fundamental particles exist, how they interact, how they used to interact. Is it different now? I think that some of the most interesting things still left to discover are actually additional particles and forces that we have never yet seen. Things at the very smallest scales of the universe. I mean, people want to go to, uh, you know, what's, what's in the furthest galaxies, what's in the depths of the oceans. What are the smallest pieces of the universe? What are the smallest building blocks of matter? Um, and what ties them together into atoms and molecules and, uh, and, and larger things like us. There are, there are a lot of open questions in, um, in the, the theoretical constructs that we have right now. We have a theory that hangs together at the distance scales and the energy scales where, where we've measured things so far. But if you look at the implications for um, smaller distances and higher energies, there are still questions, there are potential inconsistencies, which might be answered by the presence of additional particles, forces, symmetries. And so there's a lot of scope for new researchers in the field to have genuine discovery, things that we don't even know what they're going to look like. And um, that does draw a lot of people into particle physics, which I, think is, which I think is great. We need new people coming in with new ideas. There are two things that are really very important for enabling people to pursue their dreams. One is having people who support them so that uh, not just unquestioningly supporting them, but supporting them in a, in a real way where they, they give them honest feedback where they, where they need to improve, but support their aspirations and support them to improve. At the same time, um, 
It's really wonderful and really beneficial when there are some role models that people can identify with and see, oh, I could be her in 10 years, or I want to be them in 10 years, and see themselves. And for me, um, when I was a student coming up, there were almost no professional physicists who were women, who were um, uh, you know, the senior distinguished professors. Those were almost all men. And so um, those of us in our peer group had to band together and try to support one another from the sort of representation point of view. I was very lucky that my thesis advisor, Howard Georgi, was a big advocate for diversity and equality in physics. Back when I was his student, I think about half of his students were women, and that was at a time when there were very few women students at all. And so he was somebody who actively supported us. He took our ideas seriously, and he treated us with respect. He would argue with us about physics. He wanted to collaborate with us, write papers with us, just like he did his other students. And that was tremendously important. One of the most important things that Howard did for me, um, so uh, after, after I got my PhD, and he, he, was, he was my PhD advisor, um, then uh, the Harvard uh, Physics Department hired me as a postdoctoral fellow, the, the whole particle theory group um, that Howard was a part of. And so I stayed on in the department as a postdoctoral fellow. And just as I was making the transition from doctoral student to postdoc, um, my husband and I got married. And um, so then a year later, we were expecting our first child. And so I went to Howard and told him that my husband and I were expecting. And I mean, I knew Howard very well, but you never know how your boss is gonna, or one of your bosses will react. And he was as delighted as if this would be his own grandchild. He had also been my husband's doctoral advisor. So in physics terms, he's like our, our parent, and this would sort of be like, you know, the next generation. But he went beyond congratulations. He bought as a, gift for the new arrival, a playpen that he set up in his office. And uh, we had enough money to have a babysitter two days a week. And the other days of the week, uh, we would take turns, my husband and I, looking after the baby. And Howard said, when it's your day, bring the baby in, put the baby down for a nap in the playpen and I will watch the baby while you go talk to your collaborators. And I thought, uh-huh, sure. And his wife came and found me at a party and said, Howard means it, he loves babies. So I thought, okay. And I tried it and yeah, I would bring Ari in, put Ari down for a nap, go do my email, talk to collaborators. And when I'd come back an hour or two later, Howard would have Ari up on his shoulder, doing the baby dance, patting the baby on the shoulder, and, um, and uh, likely as not talking to somebody about physics at the same time. And those, those precious hours that I got to, to continue my work, but also that very visible support from Howard for a woman postdoc who had just had a baby and wanted to continue his career, that, I think, did more for me and for the department than anything else. And I have never heard anybody else have a similar story, but it made all the difference for me in my career. You can do small things for people that make a huge difference in the, in the future course of their life. And just as Howard reached out to support to support me across difference, to support, he as a man reached out to support a woman. Um, I started by doing work around women in physics, running outreach um, programs of different kinds and speaking and writing. And then over time, I started to meet physicists in the LGBT community. And I realized that that was a community that was um, by that time women were doing better in terms of representation, but the LGBT plus community in physics was uh, not particularly 
uh, well known, not necessarily very well supported, and that I could pivot and try to do more in the more expansive gender space. And so I joined a group, uh, LGBT plus physicists, that was advocating for what departments could do to be more supportive of gender and sexual minorities within physics and later astronomy departments. And um, eventually the American Physical Society uh, put together a committee to do a survey and a study on what was the climate for LGBT plus individuals in physics and what could we do to make things better. And so we did a survey and we, we had um, uh, some people with social science expertise working with us and so on. And we did this survey and report and we found some shocking things like that in the, in the year previous to the survey, a third of the people who identified as LGBT in physics, people at the graduate student level all the way up to faculty, a third of them had considered leaving their school or their workplace because it was so bad, because it was so hostile. And just the talent drain that that could represent and just the, the loss to science and the, the devastation of people's lives um, was really horrifying. And a lot of the statistics were, um, uh, you know, they really gave you pause. And so um, since then, um, I had the you know, the real pleasure of working with colleagues from that group and then a broader group of colleagues in the American Physical Society to found a forum on diversity and inclusion and make it an official part of the American Physical Society governance structure. Um, we were officially um, established a year ago and so we've completed our first year. We just ran our first cycle of elections. I was the past chair the first year because somebody had to be, so I've now rotated off. There's a new generation and it's going to continue. And I think um, that's something I'm, I'm really proud of to have been part of starting that and supporting those colleagues because we have to stand up for each other. One of the things that really excited me about coming to UC San Diego is that there is such a strong group in um, particle theory and particle experiment. There are people who work all the way from designing big experiments, thinking about how to analyze the data, all the way through the model builders like myself to people doing very theoretical abstract work. So to have the whole spectrum of expertise here that you can talk with and collaborate with is really exceptional. One of the things that really gives me hope is uh, seeing how many of my colleagues in particle physics are now doing outreach to the next generation and seeing how diverse the group of graduate students and postdocs is now. As that generation goes out to do outreach to high schools, there are going to be so many young kids from all racial and ethnic and sexual orientation and d different backgrounds of every kind who will see themselves in those who are trying to talk to them about particle physics and feel welcome and feel, I can, I can be them, I can be her, I can do this. And that's really exciting for me. One of the best parts of my role here as uh, the chief academic officer of the university is getting to think at the big scale about how we're serving our students, how we're helping make sure that they are able to feel welcomed into the university, belong at the university, and how they can make progress through their degrees in a way that all of them can do it no matter where they're starting from. We want them all to be able to get to the point of successfully graduating with the major that really they are passionate about. And so I love being able to pull together people from different parts of the university and work collectively on these issues that impact our students. 